Smart TV. Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Hey, welcome back. Uh, my cup runneth over. I have another guest in the studio. It's almost like normal times, like the old normal. Uh, Connor Tomlinson uh, from the Young Voices UK organisation, social and political commentator, joins me now. Hi, Connor. Evening, Kevin. It's like a revolving door in here for, uh, for I know. a slender 20 year old I, I think it's me. I think just people want to come in and see me. I'm, I'm, like, I'm such a popular guy. Yes, we're like flies on a turd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nicely put. Love you too. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about BBC Three. Now, uh, the BBC obviously has just had its licence fee frozen for two years. It's going to be uh, stuck at 159 quid. They say that that has plunged them into financial disaster. You know, they'll have to struggle by on 3.7 million billion pounds every year how are they going to manage uh, but uh, the cuts that they have been threatening include the axing of bbc4 which will be an absolute tragedy for bbc4's seven viewers uh, so i don't think that matters much uh, but uh, they say they're going to ax uh, channel 4 they may have to have ax other services uh, meanwhile they're bringing back BBC Three. Hooray! Uh, now, BBC Three has been online for the past few years and it's done quite nicely there, but they're bringing it back to terrestrial TV. Uh, I mean, why? Uh, well, I know why. They think BBC Three uh, attracts a, a sort of vibrant young audience and will put their youthful viewer figures up. Uh, but uh, you know, you're young. I know a few young people. I've never heard any of them talk about BBC Three. Is there any? Is there much on BBC Three that appeals to you? There's nothing on BBC Three that appeals to me. I know they've got some sort of hip hop battle show that's a little bit like the X Factor because I keep getting it on adverts on Spotify, mainly because I'm too cheap to pay for the premium to avoid all the adverts. <laughs> and also, there's that drama from Phoebe Wallaby Bridge or whatever her name is. There's Flea well, Bag, Normal People, uh, Gavin and Stacey. So it has oh, been the launch exciting. pad for quite a few shows that have gone on to become big elsewhere, if you see what I mean, on bigger channels. Uh, but uh, also, you know, I remember the days when it uh, you had programmes like F Off, I'm Ginger. Oh, or I remember F Mr. Off, I'm a Hairy Woman. Mr. Thing... T's World's Craziest Fools was yeah, on there, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah. Really, really high, high culture programming. In, in, in other words, in other words, it, it's a sort of pale version, feeble version of ITV2. Mm, yeah, definitely. I, it, it does make me laugh as well that they think that by bringing in young people, they're going to give you the programmes that you supposedly want to watch, but at a less convenient time because you have to wait for the scheduling. Especially, most of these programmes are going to be past the watershed in the evenings when young people are, you know, out seeing friends, having a few drinks, not sitting indoors at nine o'clock in the afternoon to watch a BBC drama. Mm. They're much rather and more likely to be using it like a Netflix service to to be going onto iPlayer and to be watching things at their leisure. So what I don't understand is if they want to keep making these shows and attract mm. a younger audience, double down on the BritBox model, make them exclusive, make them pay a subscription fee, for example. You could do that. Or, or, or if you're going to be, you know, the freebie BBC, uh, just keep it online. I mean, that, that that's where younger viewers will gravitate towards far more than the old-fashioned old box in the corner of your living room. But you they're, know. they're not free either because, of course, you can't watch it unless you decide well, yeah, to circumvent I mean, the law, but, which we obviously but, don't endorse doing be, here. I mean, I take that point, of course. Uh, you know, the licence fee is another issue. It's about how the BBC is spending its licence fee, as I say, 3.7 billion quid a year. Uh, now, fair enough, you might want to get rid of BBC Four, but I cannot, for the life of me, see why they want to bring BBC Three back to the terrestrial airwaves, because young people uh, are far more likely uh, to watch it while it's on online, and it's been quite successful online. Why on earth are they uh, moving back to the old-fashioned system? Uh, could it be uh, that these decisions are being made by middle-aged executives who have no idea about young people and whose idea of television uh, is not uh, on top of the way viewing habits are changing dramatically and fast. Well, I'd say a lot of the young people programming on there is number one, this sort of millennial irony of all the jokes like with Fleabag, for example, is, oh, my life's a wreck, isn't that funny? Ha ha, don't you feel in complete solidarity with the fact that I'm sort of 30 and childless and still a child? No, not yeah. particularly. Yeah. Or it's the sort of woke scold stuff. I mean, do yourself a favour and go on BBC iPlayer now and type in, is racist? 
and you get all these things up to say, is university racist? Is the church racist? Money is going on making these mini documentaries, uh, which are just basically yes, the right. anecdotes of people who go to uni, right. get a grievance study, tell one story about how some person's upset them, and make a load of money off the interview and, and grifting on social media for the rest of their lives. Why are we, under penalty of prison, being forced to pay for this? Uh, I actually have a story about this, funnily go, enough. Go on. My great granddad was like an Irish rent surf. He was completely illiterate, and he moved over after his dad died. He worked on so the farm. So you take after him, right? Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, so after, he worked on a farm. Uh, he was resist. the man, man of the house. It's all right, low blow. I'm a big boy. I can take it. And he moved over to England with, with his eventual family. Yeah. And his wife always read the letters and did the paperwork because he was completely yeah, yeah, illiterate, yeah, 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 yeah. right? So one day, a stack of letters packs up, doesn't think anything of it. Next, knock on the door. You haven't paid your license fee. Well, he can't read the letters. But because he couldn't pay the fixed penalty notice, etc., went to prison for a couple of months. Did he? Yes. So my great granddad was in prison did, for not paying the license fee. He is a, a license and fee so prisoner. This is what we're being in prison for. We're being extorted to pay to be told, oh, all of our institutions are racist, and also, yeah, you've got to fork over more and more money for this. Otherwise, one channel is going to be cut for the other. I don't, I don't know what the current uh, statistics are, but until a year or so ago, uh, not so long ago anyway, ten uh, percent of all magistrate course, uh, court cases, uh, one in ten magistrates court cases, uh, were, were the BBC taking people to court for not paying their TV license. In itself, a grotesque statistic. Uh, also, uh, people were still getting sent to prison for not paying their license and that was until quite recently so uh, that kind of thing has to stop uh, but uh, if we park the uh, license fee debate to one side I mean, I'm just thinking you know is the BBC ever going to get a young audience back it, it BBC is by de definition it's for old people isn't it well, it shouldn't be. I mean, I remember 2005, Doctor Who was getting 12 million viewers a night. And I remember they were selling exclusive toys in Sainsbury's. I was that generation. As a, as a young boy, I loved that show. And then what did they do? They went and recast it with first uh, racial revisionism. And they made it Doctor the Woke. They? Well, they did, they did that under Peter Capaldi, where they said, oh, it would actually be better if the Victorians had more black people in it, because we were going to improve history. And then it said... I think oh, Jodie, Jodie Whittaker Jodie was Whittaker the end was the of the final woke line, nail in the yeah. coffin. But it, it started declining under the Capaldi era, because people got sick of all the woke messaging, particularly all the uh, pro-Scottish pro separatism messaging that was shoved in there as well, <laughs> as early as, like, 2014. <laughs> and so that's been in terminal decline for years, and now, obviously, she's on the way out. But have you noticed they haven't announced who the new doctor is they're leaving it as an open-ended regeneration probably because nobody wants to take the, the job well, the, or, the, audience, the audience is in the toilet now. Yes, i mean it's a couple of million if you're lucky as you say used to be a huge show uh now uh, the comeback of bbc3 basically it features a load of repeats uh, and uh, sort of sub itv2 rubbish as i said earlier like eating with my ex you know, I mean, I just don't... Why is the BBC doing this? It's public service broadcasting. I don't mind it trying to entertain, but eating with my ex? Yes, yeah, so I wouldn't get invited on the BBC anyway, but I think do you know for what, my, do you know what for my that... health reasons, that's a show I can't go on. Because if you put me and my ex-girlfriends in a room with cutlery, I wouldn't be leaving all my organs intact. Do you know what, what I would watch that programme? is if they, if they took the word with out, eating my ex. That I'd watch that, don't you think? <laughs> You're going to get some Ofcom complaints by the end of this show, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it's rubbish. It's garbage. Yes. The BBC shouldn't really be doing that, should they? No. I mean, what they're going to do next? They're uh, ex on the beach or something. Well, this was the broadcaster known for getting Towie. people. Well, this is the broadcaster known for getting people through the war. They used to have programs of integrity, and now we're doing the sort of slip slide into this lowbrow, low intelligence. Uh, uh, reality TV show nonsense. And all of these have short shelf lives anyway. I mean, we had, what uh, again, as you said, X on the Beach, we had Big Brother. They're all recycled, and they all get the lowest common denominator people who are complete nobodies off the street. They get their 15 minutes of fame, and they fade into non-existence. Why don't you make something that has some lasting staying power? I'm willing to bet, again, going back to Doctor Who, the old episodes on Doctor Who when they were put on Netflix mm -hmm. have better viewing figures yearly than most of the stuff that's on BBC3. I guarantee if anyone looks it up, they can quote me on it. And it's because the programmes had integrity and they were made with some artistic expression. Mm. Nowadays, they prioritise identity politics and, and cramming all sorts of statistics over. It's got to be this many women, this many people of an ethnic minority yeah. over the integrity of the story. Just tell a good story and people young and old will come. Now, but I detect among the young, though, people like yourselves, uh, that 
they just don't have any particular affinity with the BBC. That the BBC used to be an integral part of British life. Uh, and that's why the BBC is desperately trying to get the young audience back. I mean, I've heard BBC executives tell me personally, oh, that CBBC, you know, the kids' channel is very important because we have to get them young, as if it's a lifelong indoctrination system. Uh, either way, that's not working. And young people, people in their 20s like yourself, you turn around and say, oh, how important to the B is the BBC to you? And they look at you like you're talking about an alien concept. It's just, it's just not the same anymore. I don't think the BBC uh, remotely appeals to young people, does it? I, I haven't seen the particular relevance in a long while. I don't know anyone that goes to the BBC website. Anyway, I remember having an argument with one woman who said, oh, we've got great things on there, like David Attenborough's documentaries. I mean, number one, I've got issues with David Attenborough for his climate rhetoric anyway, but there's not someone that's going to get all the young people jumping out of their chair, skipping going to the club to watch Blue Planet 3, are they? Yeah. Um, and it, it's just it's just astoundingly frustrating. It's always been seen as a big waste of money. I mean, most of the time as well, you're thinking about university students. Yeah. I don't know any university university students that actually watched TV and paid their TV license because it's just another cost to factor in. If you're living away from home, you're scraping as many pennies together so you can afford as many drinks for your mates on a night out. I mean, obviously, eat healthfully and do your degree. So I don't think the uh, the license fee is of any kind of cost to the university students. Mm. If they made a more cost effective subscription system, they didn't lock yeah. people up for not paying, they might get a younger uh, audience. Well, um, the, the Guardian call it uh, a, a, a costly and probably futile exercise uh, moving BBC Three back to uh, terrestrial uh, TV. That's uh, ironic, given the BBC are the biggest buyer of The Guardian in the country, so no, I think something more costly is them keeping well, buying The Guardian. I mean, it is, it, is, it is significant when The Guardian criticises the BBC because it loves the BBC, but mm. uh, yeah, they called it a huge and probably futile gamble. Uh, and I think that's what it is. Uh, in other words, you shouldn't let middle-aged men in suits decide what young people want to watch uh, because it won't work. Connor, good to talk to you. Pleasure. Uh, Connor Tomlinson there from the Young Voices UK organisation.